So this is the first full Labour conference for six years, which the left of the party hasn't controlled. The left, which once looked undefeatable, finds itself again consigned to the shadows. But those shadows aren't as long or as thick as they once were. The left isn't moribund as it was in the 1990s. And you don't have to go far to find them and their ghosts newly animated precisely by what Keir Starmer has or hasn't done. Walk around this conference, you'll hear a lot of shadow cabinet ministers saying the big difference between Keir Starmer and Boris Johnson is that he's a man of principle, that he's an honest man. Do you think... <laughs> do you think that, given what we now know about the way Mr Starmer, 18 months is leading the party, do you think he's an honest man? Listen, let's stick to policy debate. Let's stick to debate about what our movement and our party is about. I think the whole... Can I finish with it? Um, I think the whole issue of bringing up a lot of rule changes at this conference was a big mistake. Starmer's allies would say there is no accommodation with a wing of the party so tainted by endless rows over, of all things, anti-Semitism. Others, that it's crude politics and it's simply resurrected Labour's endless, needless war. He did run on uniting the party and I think that's really important. I, I think probably the, the single most important symbol that he could send out, the olive branch he needs to give, is simply to say that Jeremy Corbyn will be given the whip back. Corbyn, like an old showman, can still pack them in. He has a full schedule here, intentionally so. In many ways, this remains two conferences, two parties. Is the left still welcome at this party? This, this party is like a bird. It only flies with a left wing and a right wing. That's what Harold Wilson said. Indeed. And I'm always a great fan of Harold Wilson. And Keir Starmer said he wanted to run like Harold Wilson. But he's not running like Harold Wilson, is he? He is. He's talking about it. Yeah. No, because Harold Wilson balanced the different factions across the party. He didn't try and seek war with one bit of the party. He didn't want to attack one bit of the party. You're, an, you're, you're, you're an historian oh, of this yes. great party, oh, this great course. movement of ours, and you know. There was lots of arguments. Yeah, Where are the left wingers? That, that, that's a vibrant now. debate. And the McDonald left. I tell you who. I tell you who left wingers are in this country. The Labour Party is the left wing party in this country because we believe in social justice and equality. This has been a week of decisive victories for the leadership, but the true balance of power is more complicated. Starmer has a majority on the NEC, but it's narrow, and in the conference hall itself, the membership has voted for a suite of left policies which are as red as anything in Corbyn's days and a new generation of left-wing MPs thinking about the battles to come. This was not a fight that the left wanted, this is not a fight that we want to be part of, but this is a fight for, you know, democracy within the party and to make sure that every vote that members have counts. If I asked you in a word to sum up, Keir Starmer, what would you say? Less than ideal. <laughs> not quite one word, but we'll take it. <laughs> what about you? Disappointing. Disappointing? Yeah, I think I'd have to go with disappointing. Pathetic. Pathetic? I mean, he's a liar, isn't he? A liar? Ditching all the temp edges, you know. We've got 55% of CLP delegates. If we stay organised for next year, conference will win loads of rule changes. The left's going to win. The left's got to win. It's indisputable that the energy of this party for the last years has been on the left. It is now to be directed against its leader. Whatever you think of it, Jeremy Corbyn did create a movement. The legacy of that movement is all around us here. Keir Starmer had two models he could have followed when he became leader. A Joe Biden model where he sought an accommodation with the left, or a Tony Blair model where he sought to vanquish them. Starmer chose the latter. We can't yet know what the consequences of that action will be. The received wisdom of Westminster is that Labour leaders have to fight their party. But the danger is that you never stop. Thank you, thank you, thank you. That was Lewis Goodall joining us now, John McDonnell. Um, who I'm sorry to say got very wet on the way over, John, so it's a delight that you've, you've stuck it out without shivering. Um, Keir Starmer told the BBC tonight that winning was more important than unity. I'm wondering if that is music to your ears or is that a, a drumbeat of war? I think he's misunderstood. You... You need unity to win. People don't vote for divided parties. I think the two things are indivisible. So I think he's, I think he's misunderstood the nature of how you win an election. But you do need a united party. I, I, can't, I can't think of a uh, party where the party has been divided, where they've been elected. 
In fact, actually, that was part of our problem in 2017 because we had so many divisions within the Parliamentary Labour Party. So Peter Carl said that you win with a winning vision and Peter oh, Mandelson oh. seems to be very happy tonight. Is this a, a Blairite takeover? Um, I think Keir has looked at those people around him, the apparatchiks who usually cause most of the trouble, they've looked at the opinion polls, both in terms of where we stand with the Conservatives and also um, Keir's ratings, which have collapsed, and I think they've panicked. They've reached the Blairite playbook, the Peter Mandelson playbook, playbook, and you see what is step by step is happening. The old playbook from Mandelson is you show you're a strong leader by attacking who? You attack your own membership. And that's exactly what's happened today. That's what the rule changes were all about. And with, with the greatest respect to, to the interpretation of the rule changes, what you don't do is you put up a rule change and then immediately get defeated on it. And that's what happened, because the big rule change was the yeah, Electoral College. He's not looking like a man who's collapsed this evening. I mean, you're the well, ones you that have lost everything. You? You've lost the leadership, the rule book, the NEC, pretty much all Let's of the Shadow that. Cabinet. Well, and they've made it clear they don't mind. Well, they don't mind losing Andy McDonald. They don't mind okay. having a row about two £15 things on, minimum wage. Two away. things on that. The big issue this, of the rule changes. I don't know why we're talking about rule changes when we're 18 months off a general election. I'll tell but, you why. Because he said tonight that he doesn't want his MPs to be constantly facing members over deselection processes when they should be talking to the party and the country. Right. OK. Two things. On the, the big issues of the Electoral College, he lost on that. On the threshold for nominating candidates onto the ballot paper, a marginal change, he got defeated on the proposals on that and then had to come up with others. And to be honest, whatever the proposal, we'll be able to work well, around it. He, he, on reselection... Presumably he's trying to well, lock out people like well, you they, and they, your they friend work. Jeremy it Corbyn. It hasn't worked. That's the first thing. Second thing, on reselection of MPs, it doesn't matter what the threshold is. If a constituency wants to get rid of their MP, they'll do it. So that's not... They're not John, the issue. you lost. You lost so badly last oh. time round. You haven't seen a defeat like it since 1935. And if Keir Starmer says in his speech tomorrow that he will never again go into an election with a manifesto that isn't a serious plan for government... Well, Here's that is problem. aimed at you. Well, here's the problem. Here's the problem here. A leader has to build trust, not just with the party members, partly with the party members, but with the country as well. On that manifesto for 2017 and 2019, he signed up to it. He, I never heard a single word from Kia in all the constructions and all those meetings about anything when that manifesto he objected to. Never heard a word. Second thing, he stood down... We, Jeremy stood down, we then have a leadership election, he gets elected on two platforms. One, unite the party. Never said a word during that election about constitutional changes at all. OK. Well, let me just finish this point. Then, secondly, stood on a ten-point policy programme which was largely reflecting the previous election, uh, the manifesto. Well, well since tell me then, what this since means, then. then. Well, since then, he's reneged on the issue around uniting the party, and now he's reneged on some of those critics. Well, and all I'm I saying... I he's reneging on the issue of uniting the party. He's just said that he needs to win to actually be... Well, Let me no, ask you something. With the greatest job. respect, he's reneged on the uniting party, because by forced, trying to force these things through this week, he's called completely unnecessary division. Now, the issue for us now is we've got 18 months off the election. How do we unite the party? Well, I think we unite the party from the left, okay. winning the argument on the policy issues themselves and making sure that actually we're out there campaigning with a mass membership. We're demoralising our members I want to know what you moment. do then, because you said before the rule changes that if Keir Starmer ploughs ahead with these, um, you told, I think it was the Northern Agenda podcast, there should be a leadership election. Do you still think Keir yes. Starmer should reapply for his job? I think he should, because it, he got elected by the sound of it on a false prospectus. Now, the problem he's got is not necessarily... You want him to stand again well, for I the leadership? I think he should have gone back to the members. If, he, if he's going to change the whole platform upon which he was elected, he should at least go back to the members and didn't even go through a consultation process. But the so, issue... presumably, you're thinking now about a challenge. Well, we're saying to him, look, you should have consulted the members. If you're not sticking to what you're elected as leader, the back platform, you're opening yourself up to charges for dishonesty. And you know what the Tories but will do with that. he's not listening to you. So well, are you going to well, put up a challenge? Well, let me just put this. You know what the Tories will do with that. They'll say, if, you've, if you can't be honest with your own members, how can you be honest with the country? Okay. If you've lost the confidence of your own members, how can you gain the confidence of the general public? Let's, let's talk about being honest with yourself, um, because Keir Starmer told our political editor tonight that if Jeremy Corbyn apologised mm. over those ECHR comments, he would get the whip back. Don't you find it extraordinary that still 
all these years later, Jeremy Corbyn can write a Facebook page saying he recognises anti-Semitism, but he doesn't say sorry. Isn't that driving you mad he's, that your friend look, can't do that? He's made statement after statement opposing anti-Semitism, and, he's, and right. he's critiqued our own performance on anti-Semitism. Yes, he has. I'm why, sorry. why didn't he, he say has. sorry then? Why is your he leader has. still saying he could do that and get the whip back? Isn't well, that the simplest made solution? Time. Look, he's, oh, this is getting very petty. If Keir Starmer wants a form of words to get, give the, Jeremy the, the whip back, I'm sure we can find that form of words. And I'm hoping he does something tomorrow to announce that. That's what Barry Garden suggested. This is getting very petty now. What we need to do now is unite the party, because in 18 months' time, we've got a general election. And what I expect him to do tomorrow is to make statements which ex respect the wishes of the members, build into his speech the conference resolution policies that we've adopted this week, and in that way, we go out okay. and face the Tories. He said so he wanted to face outwards, not inwards. Stop forcing factional wrangles within the party.